Hello everyone and welcome to an end of the year recap and 2023 update. Today I'm going to be reflecting back on my channel over the past year and talk about what I plan for next year. And as a special treat, I'll be taking a look at some of my Christmas presents. So to start off, 2022 was a pretty interesting year for me. Outside of YouTube, it really was a great year. I graduated high school, I started college, I turned 18, I got my first full-time job this past summer, and I really just became an adult and matured a lot more. The first, like, five or so months of the year were pretty great, but with the aid of these winter months, it's really just been on a steady decline, and I've just gotten a lot more mopey, and I'm just yearning for those nice 70-degree days again, but whatever, that's the perks of living in Michigan. Anyways, um, going into YouTube, this year has been eventful for me. On the one hand, I've been extremely happy with everything such as hitting 2,000 subscribers, getting full monetization, and my overall content I think has been pretty good, but with the aid of monetization came Made for Kids. So before this year, I was never really hit hard by this feature. Um, back in the summer of 2021, I believe, um, my 2019 version of my Cranky Bugs remake was hit, but I didn't even notice that until like a month later, so I was like, oh, that kind of sucks, but this isn't really like a video I'm super proud of or a video that I care about, so it doesn't really matter. And just went on with my day. But after hitting 2,000 subscribers and, or not after that, before that, after hitting 4,000 watch hours, excuse me, and um, the opportunity to monetize my channel was available, I was hit hard by Made for Kids. I was on spring break, and one morning I woke up to over 20 different emails saying that my videos had been marked as Made for Kids. Now, I really, really hate this feature so much. It just screams laziness. It doesn't do anything for YouTube, as kids are just going to watch any and all content, regardless if it's made for them or not. Like, parents don't care. Nobody nobody cares about what their kids watch nowadays. And it really just sucks out the motivation for us users. One of my favorite parts of being a YouTuber is reading the comments from people, and the fact that that gets taken away is just heartbreaking. The way that they do this, like I said earlier, is also incredibly lazy. If it, I guarantee you it's not an actual person doing this. But if it is, what they're doing is they're filtering my videos by most popular and hitting those. So if you go to my most popular videos and um, take a look through the first like 30 or so, all of them are marked to made for kids, which is, apologies for the language, but it's so fucking stupid. Why mark only certain videos if the ones you didn't mark aren't any different than the ones you did mark? The only video that got marked as made for kids from April to August for me was my World's Strongest Engine remake. How is that any different from my, like, Thomas and the Jedi Engine remake or my 2022 Percy video? It makes no sense. And I also somehow managed to get a community guideline strike. Um, my most recent Busy Going Backwards remake was marked to Made for Kids, and I tried to appeal it because I put a lot of time and effort into that, but they rejected it, and I got a strike for it, which is great, but, oh well, let's try and get away from all this negativity. Um, my favorite video from this year has to be either my Duncan Gets Spooked or Love Me Tender remake. I just had a lot of fun doing Duncan Gets Spooked. It was really cool to play around with my fog machine, and use different kinds of lighting. And I also really enjoyed my Thomas and the Gen Engine remake and my Thomas and Brady's Great Race remake. And I also had a lot of fun branching out from Thomas content and covering other interests of mine. Um, I had a lot of fun looking at the Toy Story Signature Collection Woody, and if I ever get more of those, like Buzz or Jesse or someone, I'll do videos on them. Um, I also did that baking video in November, which is kind of fun. I want to do more content like that in the future. Not exactly like a baking video, but more raw videos, I guess? I've always wanted to do like a commentary video, like what if I react to a Thomas episode or something? I don't know. We'll see what happens. And also more like analytical or 
well-written videos for my other interests, like a review of all the Spider-Man movies, or maybe another Pixar video, like a ranking, who knows? The world's my oyster. Um, going back to Thomas, I also got my proper studio this year. Um, it served me quite well, and I look forward to filming more stuff in it. And yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have to say for this year. It was quite the whirlwind, but I'll look back at it as one of my favorite and most memorable years. So before I talk about next year, I want to take a look at a few presents I got from this year just to make the video a bit more interesting. I'm not going to be showing off everything I got because there's a lot of non-Thomas stuff, but I'll go over the Thomas stuff. So since like 2020 or so, James is here, our good old friend, has been bullying me for not having a Wooden Railway Herald or Henrietta, but the bullying can finally stop because I finally got both of them. So here is the Herald that I got. I specifically wanted this version because Herald's Wooden Railway models have been very hit or miss, mostly miss. Um, I'm not a fan of his original version, I just think it looks really weird and I don't like the printed on face. And then he had that one-off version, I believe it was included in some sort of set, but it also had a printed face and it somehow looked worse than the first one, but it had a cool magnet underneath, so that's a cool little selling point. His Mattel one is also really bad, it still has the printed face, but they print it so low, it's like all the way to where his nose is, so it looks really weird. And then his wood models look terrible, but this is one of the only, probably the only good Harold model out there. Um, I love that he has a molded face now, even though it's a little creepy, but that's how he looks in the show. So, And I think overall the model just looks very, very nice. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is um, this back part looks a little bit fat if you look at it from the top. I'm just... I'm not really vibing with that, but it's fine nonetheless. From the side, you can't really tell, but yeah, really, really nice model. I mean, the blades spin very well, and it's just overall very, very cool. He's got a couple of nicks and scratches around the place, but I can easily clean those up. And he's also not screwed in fully. You can see there's a bit of a gap on our left, his right, so I just have to screw that back down, but yeah, that's Harold. Almost lost Henrietta, but here is the main girl of the hour. I don't know why it's taken me this long to get Henrietta, but she's one of those items that isn't rare, but people just want to charge out the wazoo for her. Like, I think right now on eBay, a model in, like, this condition or worse is going for, like, 20, 30 bucks on average, which is absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's two pieces, it's technically three, three pieces of wood, and some wheels and magnets, and you're gonna charge 30 bucks for that. It's not even like the rarest item ever. Like, I kinda get it that the Flying Scotsman, well, he's not even that rare, but I get why some of the more obscure items are a bit more expensive, but Henrietta, really? No. But yeah, I specifically wanted this version because I prefer the white roof, and I think the thicker roof in general just matches Toby a lot better. Yeah, really cool. Um, her name is bolded, and the dates on the wheel say 2003, so I believe this is from 2003, maybe 2004, but, yeah, that's kind of a cool little novelty. And I would like to get a face for her. Her Adventures model has a face, so if I can find one for cheap, I'll probably, um, get that and put that onto here. Even though it's a bit taller, I'll just have to do some filing and cutting, but, Yeah. Very, very nice model overall. I'm very happy to finally have her because it's taken me oh, 15 plus years to finally get her. Get her. That was very strange, but whatever. So we got some home media stuff as well. I'll move Thomas out of the way, as you can see. So we got um, a very festive release. We got Thomas's Christmas Wonderland on VHS. I want to have all of Season 5 on um, VHS and... This was the first time that snow was put out, so, yeah. I love this um, cover. I love the metallic red, metallic, shiny, whatever you want to call it. It's just so vibrant. I love Thomas with the obviously photoshopped snow on him, and this picture of Thomas Percy and James from season two is very nice as well, even though the top of the station is cut off, but 
whatever, who cares? It's still really nice. Um, I know there are two versions of this out there. One of them has, like, just a plain old, like, flat red, but, um, I don't know which one is more valuable. I believe this one is, but who knows, but, yeah, blue tape. It's not that crazy, but I don't know if there are a whole lot of black ones put out. Oh, it's not going in. There we go. So, yeah, very nice release. Very happy to finally have it. Oh, also, I'm going to mention, I really love, this is a minor thing, but I really love the white and the red contrast there. It just feels very wintery, and it looks like a candy cane, kind of. So we also got a Blu-ray here. We have The Grey Race. Um, This is actually a Thomas Blu-ray that I was missing, and I just love how this one is set up. It looks really cool. This, this poster art is very nice. And the movie looks really good in HD, so... Yeah. The only other Thomas Blu-ray that I'm missing is Misty, excuse me, is Misty Island Rescue, but I'm not going to lose sleep over that because that movie is really, really bad. But this one is okay. Um, the only major problem with this is that there's some, like, residue, like, damage here, but that doesn't really bother me. You can't even really tell when it's far away, but yeah, I got a new, let me take it out here. I already took all the string wrap off, but yeah, it was really cool to find it. I oh, really cool to get a brand new one. It's got all the stuff in here, which is kind of outdated, but who cares? Yeah, very, very nice movie. Or not, the movie's fine, but the Blu-ray is really cool. And it's kind of monumental because this is the very last Thomas Blu-ray that we'd ever get, not counting the German, I believe, Big World, Big Adventures. So yeah, very cool. And we got one more thing to take a look at. I'll bring Thomas back here. We have one more thing to look at, and the entire thing is way too big, so I'm just going to show off um, a little part of it. But we have a Bachman Thomas here. So I'll touch on this more towards the end of the video, but I really want to branch out into other forms of Thomas merchandise, like Bachman, Tomy, Take Along, and stuff. And I've always been fascinated by Bachman. The only experience I ever have... I've ever had with Bachman is my Bachman Douglas, but I just wanted to experiment, and when the opportunity came up to get, like, a whole set, I was like, let's do it. So, yeah, it's a very, very nice model. The face is... the face. Uh, I don't like how simple that lamp is either, but the rest of the model is practically flawless. It's really, really nice. Um, The entire set came with Thomas, Annie, Clarabelle, and a loop of tracks, so there will be a special video on that coming out on Saturday, so that'll be cool. Yeah, um, very nice Thomas haul this year. I've mentioned this before, but I'm not really crazy about asking for Thomas stuff a lot because I just buy a lot of it and there's not a whole lot that I want, but I still appreciate all the stuff that I get. So let's talk about next year, 2023. I'm going to be honest, it's probably not going to be that different from this year. Every year for my channel, there's kind of a big change. For example, in 2020, I moved to a set table. In 2021, I got realistic scenery. And in 2022, I moved to a bigger um, workspace. But next year is probably going to be the exact same as this. I am considering using the fog machine more for like... If the engine's need a let off steam or something, I'm not going to put, like, puffing effects, but, you know, just simple stuff. But I haven't fully decided on that. I'd also really love to dabble in moving the eyes around and changing everybody's expressions, but that's going to take a lot of time, and it probably won't happen until 2024, 2025, but whatever. Um, the only probable thing that would change this year would be my camera. Right now, I use an iPhone 11, and it's nice, but I hear the iPhone 14 has a really, really good camera, so I'd like to upgrade to that, or maybe even like a professional camcorder. We'll see what happens. In terms of remakes, I'm probably still going to stick to one every month, but I really want to include you guys in your input more, so... Right now, I have remakes planned for January, February, March, May, October, November, and December. Those being right now, they could change, but right now, I'm planning on doing Thomas Breaks the Rules, Daisy, 
Percy proves a point. Henry gets the Express, a remake of my uh, 2019 one. Haunted Henry, Unscheduled Stops, and Hunt the Truck. So I'm going to let you guys come up with some some suggestions for remakes for April, June, July, August, and September. I don't really have any rules, but I'm not going to be buying anything new for them. Like, for example, if you suggest Horrid Lori or Thomas's Day Off or like any of the episodes with the Logging Locos... I'm not going to go out of my way to buy the two of the Lorries or Dennis or Bastos and Ferdinand. It's just a way for me to save money for college and such and for my other bigger videos. So if you want some ideas and you want to know what I have, excuse me, what I have, um, go watch my latest collection video. Everything there and everything I showed off in this video are what I have right now. I'm also open to doing re-remakes, but the cutoff for that is going to be two to three years. For example, I'm not going to redo like Henry and the Elephant or Percy and the Signal, but anything from before Thomas and the New Engine should be fine. But yeah, other than that, you guys have full range. If I have the items, I'll do classic series, hit series, CGI, whatever. Excuse me. I'm developing a lot of saliva from talking this much. That was kind of really gross, but whatever. But yeah, you have to have your suggestions in by January 31st of next year. You can leave them in the comments here, and I'll also make a post about it on Twitter, Instagram, and my community page. And I'll pick the five best or most popular choices by the end of February. Now, I mentioned that I wanted to branch out from Thomas content, and I still want to, but... I also want to do some Thomas stuff not relating to Wooden Railway. Like I mentioned earlier, um, I want to do some like Bachman stuff, Trackmaster stuff. I also want to do some more in-depth like analytical videos. Like I want to do some top 10 videos, but those would only happen if I have a lot of time between remakes. So, yeah. Um, that's really all I have to update you guys on, but... I have one more kind of major thing. It's not... I don't want this to be a depressing ending, but I do want to bring this up. So I haven't fully decided on this yet, but I'm probably going to stop collecting Thomas One Rally fairly soon. I'm not going to stop making videos, far from it, but I made a goal for myself that I would collect every character from season 1 through 7 and then admittedly stop seeking out others. Like... I'm probably not going to look for someone like Molly or Flora, but if I find any character from Season 9 to The Great Race for under $5, I'll get them. The only other characters that I would try and seek out would probably be the Flying Scotsman. That's probably my next um, target of attack. Um, I'd also like to get Connor and Millie as well because they're really cool. Uh, and the only characters from the first seven seasons that I'm missing are non rail characters like um, Elizabeth, Tiger Moth, Alfie, stuff like that, more of the pack characters. But those aren't really a huge priority priority to me. But other than that, I'm pretty much good with my collection now. And with that, I'm, I've been mentioning this throughout the whole video, but I'm really looking into collecting other ranges. I got that Bachman set to test out if I liked dabbling in other ranges, and so far, I'm loving the range so far. I'm probably going to start by collecting the remaining Tomy, Trackmaster, and Playroll characters that I'm missing, and then I'll move into Take Along and Take and Play. I probably won't do the entirety of those lines. I'll probably get the Steam Team and probably the Narrow Gauge characters. Currently, I have Take Along Thomas, Toby... The front half of Donald and Oliver, so I'd have to get Edward, Henry, Gordon, James, Percy, Duck, the rest of Donald, and Douglas. And then, like, Scarlowy, Renaeus, and all that. I think I actually have Scarlowy, though. And then after I get all those, or all the characters that I want, then I'll move into Bachman, even though that's very expensive, but I probably won't be making Bachman content until, like, 2024, 25, like I said earlier, but... Like, it's really expensive. But yeah, I've always wanted to do a remake with um, Trackmaster items in the style that I do right now. Excuse me. And I might experiment experiment with that later, but the problem is 
that I don't have many um, like accessories. For example, you can see in the background there, I have a ton of like Thomas Wooden Rally accessories, and I do have like some smaller Trackmaster things like signals and signal boxes and stuff. But if I want to do a full remake with Trackmaster stuff, I'll probably have to get more. So we'll see what happens there. But for now, um, we're just going to stick with Thomas Wooden Rally. Okay, so that was a lot. Um, I don't believe I have anything else left to talk about. So I'm probably going to be ending the video right now. I want to thank you guys so much for this great year. I had a really fun time. I got an email. Shh. I want to thank you all so much for your support this year. It means a lot to me. Um, we're coming up on 10 years on YouTube. That's going to be in a little while, but it's still coming up. But get excited for that. But yeah. Hope you all had a very safe and fun Christmas. Hope you all have a great New Year. If you celebrate like Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, have fun with those. Or I hope you did have fun with those. And I will see you on Saturday where I put out where I will put out my review of the Bachman set. And then I don't know if I'll be putting out a video before Thomas Breaks the Rules, but that'll probably be coming out end of January. So I'll see you then. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye!